Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. Easter. This is the, that's only three people you can hear, trust yeah. me. <laughs> Here are uh, all appropriately gathered apart, uh, sharing what is the highlight of the year uh, for us in the calendar. It's even more exciting than Christmas. It's the day that we remember that love wins, that uh, life is stronger than death and darkness and that love will triumph over hate, even in and through some of the most difficult circumstances. So many people will work out creative ways of celebrating this fact today, and in their excitement and enthusiasm, uh, they probably will go a little bit too far and say things like, uh, this is amazing, I am free because Jesus suffered so I would never have to. And I think that it takes it a little bit too far. And uh, actually, when instead of Jesus being some sort of substitute for us and our suffering so we don't have to suffer, Jesus is, is actually uh, is the pathway for us. He's actually the stereotype in whose footsteps we must follow. I know we like to celebrate new life and joy, but we can't separate it out from the life of pain and the life of suffering. And the, because that is the cost of loving in this world. Jesus lived a good life and uh, that led him all the way to a cross. It's important that we lead good lives too. Good lives aren't nice lives. Nice lives are where you don't rock the boat. Whereas good lives are ones that stand up for what's right in this world. Good lives don't have the absence of fear. In fact, they through the fear they have courage and they continue to move in spite of the fears that we may have. It's uh, very important that we get together to celebrate this day, uh, knowing that true love costs. I think as we follow that life, we shouldn't go out and seek out our own suffering. Don't collude in your own demise. Life will do that to you. Uh, Jesus didn't want this. As we see a couple of days before in the garden, he was crying, if you could take this away from me, please take it away. So it's not about masochism. It's not about us seeking suffering. The cost of a good life, the cost of a life, the cost of a bad life is also suffering, but it's something we're all experiencing. But we know that if we can get to the other side, we will see new life and new hope emerge uh, from not the way we planned life, but the way life is. Uh, I love my favourite story that I just want to share with you and then that'll be it for us today. Is told by one of my favourite authors and she is one of the world's greatest spiritual teachers but she talks about life across a table and her earliest memory as a little girl is her dad coming from the beach dragging a huge lump of wood, a bit, bit similar, real heavy and then he uh, immediately took it to his shed when he was a young and strong man and he uh, fashioned uh, that and he worked it out and he made it into a huge dining room table, this huge piece of driftwood. And it was across that dining table that she marked her life. So she remembers all her birthday dinners were across that table, all the celebrations of graduating school and all the celebrations of graduating university and every party that was ever celebrated was across that table. It was also across that table that uh, life occurred, so the sadness and the sorrow of her mother passing away. Uh, it was across that table she would study late into the night and, and leave the lights on as she uh, became very successful in her career and uh, studied a PhD. And it was across that table one night that she remembers having the striking memory, thinking, oh God, I've left my, my run at life and love a bit too late. I'll probably remain unmarried for the rest of my life. It was across that table though that she was able to share the shock of her life that she'd met someone. And it was across that very table that uh, that man trembling one night asked her father for permission to ask her for marriage. It was also across that table that she uh, received the news from her father as he sat her down that he was unwell and would die of cancer soon. Uh, it was across that table that she shared exciting news that she was pregnant unexpectedly and uh, she uh, they celebrated wildly that night and it was across that table that in the last few weeks of her father's life she was able to hand her baby and let her father embrace that child. It was across that table that one night her father woke her up and took her to that table and shared the horrible news that uh, a drunk driver had, had uh, in an accident killed her husband and newborn. And it was across that table 
that she spent the next few years crying, in deep pain, just weeping. And when she felt there were no more tears, she would cry again. And it was after years and years, a few years of crying, that one night when she was at the end of it all, she felt this strange presence next to her. She didn't know what that presence was because she'd spent the years cursing God. And it was from that moment that she looked up from the table, didn't see anyone next to her, but felt the comfort and the peace on the other side of deep darkness, deep death and deep suffering. And that's where uh, this line just dropped into her heart, which was, God comes to you disguised as your life. Not the beautiful thing that you had planned, not the life that comes from, uh, that comes accompanied with an orchestra singing a marching band song, but more like a cold and broken holiday that emerges from the depths of pain but knows that new life is there. She's become one of the world's greatest spiritual teachers. Thousands upon thousands of people have benefited from her teaching as a result. She would wish for it all to come back in her husband and child. But she knows that her life now has a deeper purpose as she emerged from the cocoon of that darkness that new life came for her. If God comes to, to you disguised as your life, we know that God is love. So the invitation to love will come to you disguised as your life. Your crappy, shitty life that's stuck in a home right now. And you'll see that invitation come to you through the relationships you've avoided for many years or the, and those loved ones that are close to you. You can also find love in looking at a leaf and hearing the birds and hearing songs that you've never heard before as you attend and you become the greatest archaeologist ever within your household now and marvel at, at the beauty of a butterfly. You will find that if you allow it to speak to you. You know, a lot of people talking about when world, the world comes back to normal. Well, forget normal. Who wants normal? I'm seeing a world that's finally awakening to what's important. Right? It's not sports stars or celebrities, it's our essential services workers, most of whom are women. And we know we can't do without them as they get up day after day to care for our sick, to care for the homeless people who are living in our communities. And I thank every one of you who has reached out and donated to our emergency appeal uh, as we continue to support people through this time. I'm seeing a government that's suddenly paying for childcare I'm seeing a government all of a sudden that is, uh, is subsidising wages and we're talking about universal basic income. Who knew that what we lacked wasn't the resources but the will? You know, I don't want this world to return to normal. I'm seeing the exciting possibilities everywhere. I'm seeing us get 30 night stays for our guys on the streets to stay in hotels so they don't have to be on the streets through this time. And I say, that's the cold and broken hallelujah that we can all join in. The invitation to love will come to you in a million different ways, but you have to be open to it. You have to let it emerge, and it will come to you as a small, insignificant thing, perhaps like a ladybug or a bee flying in on, on some flowers. But you just let it rise. You know, Arundhati Roy is my favourite author unashamedly, and her quote is, you know, a new world is on her way. And on a quiet morning, I can hear her breathe. So let's be a part of rebuilding a new world. It doesn't require inspiration, that's just breathing in. Conspiration is where we breathe together. So let's breathe and listen and create that new world together. Amen. Mm -hmm. Benediction, Victor. Uh, benediction. All right, I'm just gonna send you probably just to the next room. <laughs> That's about as far as we go now. So as you make your 50th trip to the fridge today, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.